Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Red State Blues. Uh, ben and Melanie here. Uh, Melanie is here. Hi, I'm over here. Um, and uh, yep, we're here on the eve of the uh, midterms here in 2022. I'll leave you the election. Um, tomorrow is the election. It's also like a full moon, isn't it? Yes. Is that tonight or tomorrow night or? Full moon. It looks like a full moon tonight. Yeah, it looks like a full moon, doesn't it? Yeah. Then I think the Huge. lunar eclipse is tomorrow. Is that it? Yeah, the eclipse is tomorrow. I think you're right. Um, anyway, yeah, really freaky. Uh, lots of changes of foot. Lots, yes. of, lots of scary stuff. Um, speaking of that, we had we actually recorded this ep- We had recorded an episode like three days ago, and to talk about this stuff, and it just completely. After we were done recording, I went to save it, and it wouldn't save it. It wouldn't convert it to an MP3. It wouldn't do anything. It, it, my, I tried to tried everything I could, and I ended up closing out of. I used GarageBand. I closed out of GarageBand, and it like didn't save it, and just completely wiped it. So we're this is our like actual election eve episode here on election eve, just basically because I couldn't actually pre-record one. Because yep. the stupid MacBook wouldn't let me. Right. Um, so that's kind of, this is the closest to the live broadcast I think we've ever had. Yep. Um, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, anyway, that, not that this is anything like that. Uh, but <laughs> Yeah. That was very frustrating, folks. Oh, my God. We had a real good conversation, and it's too bad that the it got... The closest thing I can think of it akin to is, like, if you completed, like, a, like a, a mini-page assignment in school... And then just like deleted it off the computer, never to be found again. I don't know if you ever anybody's ever experienced anything like that, but that's exactly what like this was. It was just yep. oh my dear God. Um, hopefully I don't lose this one too. Uh, I've taken some more precautions this time though, so it should be better. Um, but I think I might take some breaks here also to make sure that it saves. Um, anyway. Um, I really just wanted to talk a little bit. I just really wanted to make a short, short podcast here today, tonight, um, uh, about the 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 election, upcoming election tomorrow, uh, for those people who still aren't on the fence, maybe or haven't voted yet. Um, do not. This is just something that came out in M Live tonight. Um, uh, judge ends. It's this is a uh, to be clear. Um, the Republican Secretary of State uh, candidate Christina Caramo is uh, completely insane. And um, anyway, the, the article here, um, and I'm just saying that just because yeah. she's just, yeah, fucking nuts. Uh, judge ends Caramo's intolerable lawsuit to stop Detroit's absentee ballots. A judge said this, a false flag of election law violations and corruption. That's how a Michigan judge described a lawsuit from Republican Secretary of State candid, candidate uh, Kristen Caramo ruling... Uh, Monday, her lawyers had no evidence to prove Detroit should upend its mail ballot processes. Such harm to the citizens of the city of Detroit, and by extension, the citizens of the state of Michigan, is not only unprecedented, it's intolerable. She literally was just suing to prevent people from mailing in ballots. Yep. I don't even know what the hell to think of that, but apparently she just, and also, specifically just people in Detroit couldn't mail in their ballots. Like, people outside of Detroit in the state could. So, it, it's painfully uh, obvious that what that, that was going on there. Um, but is she trying to specifically prevent people of color from voting, perhaps? Yes, but she is an African-American woman, Oh, I too. know she is. I've but seen, like I've just, seen yeah, that. She is yep. still that shit insane. Um, it's, anyway, the fact that the judge said this uh, is a t- Wayne County uh, Circuit Court Judge uh, Chief Timothy Kenny wrote... Uh, the suit alleged uh, massive voter fraud and asked the court to require Detroiters to vote in person or get absentee ballots in person. Caramo also wanted Detroit clerk Janice Woodfrey to stop accepting absentee ballots returned by mail and to stop counting ballots in drop boxes. So, I yeah, to rule, okay, anyway, to rule in favor would e- egregiously uh, harm eligible board voters, Kenny wrote, noting absentee uh, voting had been going on for weeks. Around 60,000 ballots had already been returned. I'm not really sure. I, I mean, obviously, I see what they're attempting to do here, but just to stop people from voting. Lawyers, for example, had no evidence of people illegally stuffing ballot boxes, Kenny said. Their suit also cited 
the debunked movie 2000 Mules, which falsely alleges ballot stuffers stole the 2020 election from Donald Trump. Um, so that based it basically based it on like a fake bullshit mockumentary. Not a mockumentary. I shouldn't say mockumentary. A bullshit documentary, mm-hmm. um, uh, stating that the the election was stolen. Yeah, in twenty twenty. So yeah. which people are going around apparently quoting this movie, and they, there are a lot of people who believe it, I guess. And that that's where people are like sitting armed outside of ballot boxes in some other states. I've heard, but. I would like to say up. that if yeah. anybody, any candidate mentions that movie or denies or, or tries to say there was election fraud or says they won't um, won't concede if the other candidate wins is yeah. is against democracy. And in order to save our democracy, please do not vote for people like that because they obviously don't believe in the democracy they're running in anyway. No. And that that's actually the really scary story here. I think is that she's just a symptom of a bigger cause. Yeah, she's a bit wacky, but she's doing her job. Mm-hmm. She her job is she's already taken the position of Secretary of State, apparently trying to stop people from voting. Yep. If she becomes Secretary of State, she will mm-hmm. actually stop you from voting. Yep. Um, she'll stop you from being able to like vote well, well, for who you want to vote. Um, and for um, yeah, it's it's actually terrifying. Um, that's the scariest thing about this election. And then it's scary, too, because there's a lot of people out there that are so hung up on these weird news story things that they don't see what's happening. And it's like those same people, you know, 15 years ago would have been like, I just don't understand how the good German people could have ever elected somebody like that. I know. And I, uh, um, I think it's important to know that, like, I think the mock, I mean, from what they're saying, I mean, unfortunately, this is going to happen. That most likely, the Republicans are going to take the House in at the federal level. Not, I'm not talking about Michigan politics anymore. Uh, just I'm talking about the the House. Most likely, mm-hmm. um, then uh, they're going to go on some. I mean. Michael Moore sent out a large email about this. Bill Maher actually was talking quite a bit about this. Yeah, his new rules were uh, the darkest new rules I've yeah, ever it was seen. Very, very dark. And, and he, why you should point, why you should listen to them though, is they were pretty close to right on target yeah, in twenty sixteen. They're like old men, like yep. boomer guys, right, and everything. But I actually totally agree with a lot of what they're saying. They're also fairly. I mean, Michael Moore is not moderate at all, but I think Bill Maher would be considered a moderate, yeah. um, at least because he has some definitely conservative beliefs. I think as well as yep. as liberal beliefs, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, so I mean, you can see both perspectives at right. least there. But um, but yeah, I mean, they're just going to go on a tirade of impeachments and everything once they take control of the House, and then in twenty twenty four when Trump runs, and he's even if he wins or not, he's just going to show up. And then, but he's going to have the House of Representatives to back him at that point. And all these um, other positions across the country that have been filled by Trump supporters and election deniers yeah. across the country that are uh, running elections like and all kinds of stuff. Like secretaries of state in other states. And judges. Because I don't think that Caramel will win our state. Damn it. She's not going to win. So let's just not <laughs> go down that road. But like, um, yeah, there's lots of judges, lots of people that they put in place. They're going to like back them. Right, no, which Trump. he did not have last time. Yep. There were actually Republicans like many, Liz many, Cheney. Many, well, all the Republicans were against him, really. He, it was not well thought out. I mean, right. Pence was against him. Like, mm-hmm. everybody was against him. Mm-hmm. They were all freaking out, and he, his mob was going in there after them. Yep. So that, now this time, it's going to be different. Yep. The mob is actually going to consist of some of these people in right. a different way, I feel like. So mm-hmm. that that's actually, some of these people have actually chosen to back him. So... Anyway, and let me be clear: when you choose to back that kind of ideology, you're choosing not to have a U.S. democracy anymore. And we're not even talking about wedge issues here. We're no, not talking not about guns all. or abortion or anything nope. like that. This isn't even about those things. This is just about believing in democracy. fair and equal elections, believing Versus that you can not. believe in your elections and that they're they're true and solid and, and by that, law. That people are just thinking of the short term things, like I have to vote to end abortion or I have to vote to protect my gun. Right. But like, they're not, th- they're just, they're going to be, I mean, frankly shocked, I think when the democracy ends, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And they're gonna, they're not going to get rid of voting. That's not going to end. Not really. You know what I mean? Like that's like, everybody votes. Well, everybody in the, I think that's very clear. We should make it clear. Everybody like in Russia votes, mm-hmm. you know, people everywhere vote. People in North Korea vote. It's just their votes don't mean anything. 
You know what I mean? They don't have any actual choices. Mm -hmm. So it's just... it's Because anyway. they have an autocratic leader that's going to stay in power. Yeah, people in power. China vote, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, like... And it's our just, elections just, do mm -hmm. matter. I feel like this election right now matters this so much. This one matters much. tons, yeah. Um, all, but all I can think of is... I, mean, I guess I can only focus on the bright spots and just hope that Michigan... You know, maybe there's a chance that Michigan could actually have a lot more Democrats in our House, in the legislature, in the House, um, in the, the Michigan Senate here. You know, there's a good chance that uh, there's going to be some new Michigan Democrat senators, and there's going to be more of a balance. I don't think that the Democrats are going to take control, but I think there may be more balance balance in the force. So. That may be, but, like, if democracy fails in 2024, what will that mean for Michigan, do you think? Even if the no, it doesn't matter. I know we could pretend to just be out here and be like a pro gun Norway, you know what I mean, and be like, oh, we have we have all these great things in Michigan that we're doing, and we like guns too. But like, it's not going to happen. You're right. If the federal government comes in, and you're right, if they if they pass an anti-abortion law, that's going to be nationwide. That's what they'll get that through. You know yeah. what I mean? It's there's going to be all kinds of things like that that could happen. I think. It ain't going to matter what people in Michigan put in the Michigan Constitution when the federal government's going to override it. That's true. That's actually going to be definitely on the agenda, I'm sure, is passing a nationwide yep. anti-abortion bill. You know? Restricting voting. Yep. There'll be restrictions. Oh, yeah. The, the, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is, like, they will... I looked at the proposed bu budget. <clears throat> Wasn't all... The really sad thing is, is, like, it feels like we're, doesn't it feel like we're reverting? Like, I, I can think of, like, like all these gains that were made in the 60s, mm -hmm. really mostly the 60s and, and part and 70s to a degree, are being just erased, you know, like I'd say by pro progressive gains, I guess, mm -hmm. and just, just equality type yep. gains, you know, just like, oh, yeah, uh, minorities should be able to, like, vote and... You know, thing like it's just like, oh, that's that. The that, ninety nine percent of the Americans not, should have, you know, living wages and health care and you know, basic. I think at least those concepts existed then, and mm -hmm. I think that the people thought, people at one point would have thought that those things would have happened in the near future if they didn't, you know. Right. But it just, man, everything's like really bad. It's well, I mean, it's been backsliding. I think slowly, our entire lives. Yep. Since the late seventies, since the early eighties, well, since Reagan, the Reagan era, really. It's been backsliding our entire lives. That was a backlash. But that well, it was a backlash, Definitely. right? Against the hippies, but it was been like a slow backlash, like a slow. Yeah. But I, I'm saying like now it's sped up. Mm -hmm. Like now, like they they made slow slow gains over the last four decades, and now they're just like, nope, we're just gonna ban everything, ban abortion, take away people's rights, take away all the you social know, safety away, nets. Yeah, take away everything. Make you a low so. wage slave for the rest of your life. Uh, take away. Uh, Low-income housing. Easier said than done. I mean, Social I think that, the, that there's people like the Koch brothers that would want to see that, you know. But I don't think I think it's a lot easier said than done. I think anything's for up for grabs if they get control, and they just stay there. I think that they're going to have to try to keep the people happy. That's the funny thing. I know what you mean, but I think that it's like easy to, in a way, the system would be just a completely different system, mm -hmm. you know. If you if you're gonna to switch to authoritarianism, it's just gonna be a completely different type of system. So they might actually have to like give some people. There's some positives, I suppose, to fascism. I would like to say though <laughs> yeah, that I think universal healthcare <laughs> is that, China. Is everybody covered? <laughs> like, um, I just think really that, bad healthcare. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. I just think that we need to focus right now on the midterms and try to avert this democrat democracy this crisis of democracy here and i think we need to realize that we need to vote for our own personal interests which i think people have gotten subverted by advertising and uh correct uh slogans I totally and, agree yeah, and lies repeated not. over and over again get to be believed first of all like the republicans one of their main main tenets is about fiscal responsibility but it seems like now uh, they always drive the country into debt every time. Single they time, take control. <laughs> Democrats like take control. But they have to fix the economy. They, they fix, fix the economy. They get the. Um, they get the budget straightened out. Yep, and reduce the Republicans are supposed to be the debt. party of fiscal responsibility, but what they are is the party. It feels like to me, of the giving handouts to rich people. 
Yep. Like, they're just there to help rich people. They work for the rich, super rich, I mean, mm-hmm. not just for, like, hundred thousand heirs, but, I mean, like, billionaires. Mm-hmm. They work for the billionaire class, and they're there to help them and help them not to have to pay as many taxes and help them give them handouts, really, and give their corporations mm-hmm. handouts. So, I mean, I guess if you think of that as fiscally responsible, they're there to increase the stock market. Right. Probably think- in their mind. Maybe that's their version of fiscal responsibility, but it's nothing to do with the debt... Nothing to do with the stuff they talk about. The thing that pissed, the thing that you got to think about is that, like, when you go do your taxes, regular people around here in Montcalm County that have regular people jobs, you know, and even the more better paying jobs or the the steady manufacturing jobs, the percent that you pay in taxes is way higher than a million billionaire. They don't pay hardly anything. Well, they can just offshore their money. That so too. that's how they could do that. I mean, I thought that's all. But the percentage of their tax is way lower. Like, mm, I mean, it's it's like 20% now or something. I mean, that's not like nothing. But I think the point is, I think that what they do is they hide it. Yeah. So they're really, they're not paying taxes on their on their wealth. You know, they're really, they're, they're keeping it, you know. I'm not saying that they don't, they, they really pay very little. I agree. And like, that they, they, there's, there's loopholes designed to allow them to do that. That's what you're saying. Like yep. the system is like, oh yeah, in theory they got to pay twenty percent, but they're not really paying that. Right, they're, and yeah, so when we got right. that little bit of money during the pandemic, they were thinking that Americans were offshoring their money, but really, what really they were happened? Thinking like rich people think. Everybody yeah, think was right. paying bills or paying for well, I kids' think lunches, buying groceries and stuff, and yeah. rent, and, and you know all those types of things. It went directly to bills. It went right back to the people that, you know, well, right back into the economy. Yep. And went right back up into their hands. Up into their hands, right. So it actually benefited them, ironically. They still think we have a lot of money, which is why all this inflation and price gouging is coming from. Yeah, I know. And that's where we, we, you saw a joke about that gouging thing. Yeah, the GOP. Grand, the Grand Ole Party means should be gouging party or something gouging like that. Gouging our prices party. Gouging our prices party, yeah. Yeah, it does feel like that. I mean, actually, this sounds bad. Because I think that we, we started this podcast with the concept of reaching across the aisle. And I still feel like we could reach across the aisle. I still feel like, man, there is so many more common things that people have than there are differences. Like it doesn't have to be just everybody against everybody. I can agree with, uh, so that's, with that up to a point. I can agree with that up to a point. But when you are talking about letting go of our democracy in the United States, I mean, I can, I can, well, I can try to talk to people all the Republicans, are, the Republicans are talking about at rallies. From we, I, we watched Jordan Klepper. You know, he went to, he's gone to, he goes to rallies all the time. And, you know, I mean, they were, they're talking like civil war. Mm-hmm. And that's not, no, no, you don't want a civil, no one wants a civil war. I don't want a war. civil war. What I'm saying is, is I can try to be. The Democrats aren't going to win that. I can try to talk so about like different issues. But when, when you don't, I don't know how to make people understand the, what's at stake here. And that what, what an autocratic government or authoritarian government would look like. Like, I don't think they understand these wedge issues they're voting for are going to actually end up in an uh, authoritarian government, and I don't understand why they don't. Oh, Trump doesn't this. even give a shit about it at all. If Trump got into power, he would probably legalize abortion. He power even for give power's a shit. sake, there. Yeah, though. he he would just do whatever he thinks is popular. Mm-hmm. So he probably wouldn't even do any of those things. He probably would do the opposite because he would try. He would want to be. He just he just wants to be loved. That's all he wants. I would He's, love he it. He was born with everything. He was born with mm-hmm. everything. The only thing he can't get is love. I would, so he's desperate for right? love. And I <laughs> would love I him very, very what? much if he went back to being a reality TV star, star and telling everybody they're fired. He wants I would love he that. Can't get love I now. would write him love notes if he would he just can't. go back to TV well, and maybe leave he would politics alone. Maybe he would have thought that was the case. Yeah, <laughs> that was the case. Um, I don't know. This full moon has me all disoriented. Um... I kind of like, I, I'm actually, you're right. I don't want to be just like depressed about this. I actually want to be very positive because I'm, I do feel very positive about Michigan. I feel mm-hmm. like the right people who know what the hell they're doing in the government are going to win. Um, I don't know why the Republicans seem to have, be insistent on hiring people to run that are incompetent. I don't actually think that people like Pat. I actually, I'm, I'm not saying I, 
I'm going to vote for Pat Outman, but I don't think Pat Outman is incompetent. I don't think Rick Outman is necessarily incompetent. I don't think some of the people that represent our areas around here are not incompetent. So I will give them that. You know, I don't agree with them their politics at all, but I don't think that they're horrible people at all. But I do think that some of the people that are running are horrible people yep. um, that are not maybe, you know what I mean, are, are on a higher level, actually, frankly. So um, I will say this, too, about John Mulinar. He is accessible if you have to talk to him about, you know, something I, from what I understand. And, like, that that's good. I don't think that some of the newer breed, though, of politician are going to give a shit. Like Marjorie Taylor Greene, I know she represents Georgia. I don't know if she's going to know anything, if she does know anything about anything. You know what I mean? If she, can she help somebody out? You know what I mean? If they need it in an emergency situation where they need, like, a visa and they're in another country or something like that, can she? Would she? Or would you have to, like, owe her, you know? You know what I mean? That, that's, that the system gets really corrupt really quick. Yep. You know? Um, that's a terrifying thought, actually. Mm -hmm. But um, what happens if you're trapped in a foreign country and you need a passport right away? You know what I mean? And you, so you could call your congressman to fix that situation. Yep. But what if they're not going to help you if they think that you're from the opposite political party? Right. Like, that's not how that system is supposed to nope. work at all. And it never has. Because once you're elected, has, you knowledge. represent but everyone. That, it, yeah, you represent everybody. Once you're elected, you have to you have to just suck it up because it's all and you're going to have to get those complaints from every side. Yep. And that's it's it's yeah you're going to have to get these problems and put out fires on for everybody. Yep. You know and deal with issues for everybody, um, and that goes especially for municipal government I'm mm -hmm. sure, but like it goes for the higher level things too. So I don't know. <sighs> anyway, but if the system becomes corrupt and based on personal favors and who you know it, like with that seems to be the trump way yep. you know it'll be a disaster and no one will trust anything i mean anymore i mean anything to deal with yeah this sort of things anyway um sorry did you have anything else you want to go over tonight we could probably call it, wrap it up here it's been you know we, this has actually gone longer than i originally even intended it to but um <sighs> I, and, it's, uh, and it's gotten darker, too, than I intended it to. I just want to mention, like, make sure that you look at the proposed uh, GOP budget online because if you are a person in this county that is on um, welfare or a person in this county that is retired Snap. or on right. disability, they are um, proposing to cut those programs significantly mm -hmm. force disabled people to have to work for the disability or Maybe. force them off within a certain amount of time make a cap for um, social security medicare they're going to raise the age raise the age medicare. and also cap it to a certain oh yeah and then cap it on the other yeah, end yeah right? cap yeah, it on yeah, the yeah, other yeah. end so mm -hmm. just think about those things when you're at the polls i i'm sure that uh I don't know who's listening to us at this point in this hour right before the voting, but I hope you are, and I I hope yep, that you... you three people who are listening. Do your yep. research <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. pray for democracy. Well, do more than pray. Go vote. Yeah. That's the... Yeah. Don't do yeah. the thoughts and prayers. Do yeah, the voting. D yeah. There's more than pray. Right now, your vote does matter. Yeah. And that's the takeaway that I'm getting from... Yes. From everybody, really, on all, on, on all sides of the political spectrum. I mean... Think before you vote. Research before you vote. And get your butt down there. Don't think also, someone else will do it for also, you. Also, if anybody is listening to this, actually, who's... I mean, I know... Just don't believe everything you read, either. Don't necessarily believe everything you read online. You know, don't believe everything you see on TV. Don't believe everything you read... Uh, or, I mean, see, like... Like that 2000 Mules documentary. Like, too many people believe that. Yep. It's just too easy to just get absorbed into stuff like that and just, it, it, like, it's totally bullshit. I don't know what the, <clears throat> the deal is with, like, some people's, some people, I, I don't actually think it's generational. I, 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 I blame generational stuff too much. But it's actually just a, a certain people just don't have a very good bullshit detector. If they can, I don't know what the, what's up with that. If they film but. it like a regular documentary, they're going to believe it. What they need to do is learn something you learn when you get higher education. And what that is is when you read a source of any kind, you look at the bibliography of that source. Where did they get their information from? How how good is the, the source that it's coming from? Are they a trusted expert or not? 
Have you heard of them before? Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, when I took, a, you know, my history classes, I did, I had to even go further than that. I mean, it had to be a primary, so prime, well, they had, they had, well, we had secondary sources and primary sources, but secondary sources could be considered worthless uh, half right. the time, really. You had yep. to have primary documentation, you know what I mean? And yep. which that had to be, like, directly from, it had to be, like, the written word from, from the, the original person who lived the experience, or it had to be their actual, like, talking to the person who lived through an experience, you know? Right. Like if, if like you a primary source would be if you wanted a primary source on the Holocaust for example you'd talk to a Holocaust survivor right you know what I mean and talking to them would be the primary so- source mm-hmm. and that's the sort of thing like the secondary source is just like setting some book that somebody wrote about something you know what I mean like that's not that's not anything really at that point so um, and it, still it's it's useful very much secondary sources are useful to mine them for primary sources mm-hmm. though but um I yeah, think anyway. that I think that it's just difficult enough the state of the age with the way information can be presented and manipulated and look very professional, very polished. Anybody, uh, you're right. That That's part of it right there. Anybody can make anything look amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't look like some fake GeoCities account from 1985. Because no. you could really and tell like back not, then and now You could tell like, back then quite easily that something was not legit now, at least yeah. online. Now it's just everything looks the same. So yep. You just kind of believe what you want. Right. And I guess that, I don't know, I just think that some people just don't have very good bullshit detection skills. I also think, so. you know, for both sides of the aisle, you test test what you're reading with the other side. Talk to a Republican. Talk to a Democrat. See what they think yeah, about also, what you I mean, just read. I think that also it's important to be, you can have beliefs. Mm-hmm. Like, you can not like abortion and not get one for yourself. And that's okay. And that's okay. And that's okay to have those beliefs because you're, you're a good Christian or whatever and you don't want it. But, like, just because that's you doesn't mean you have to enforce, I don't know, that's, that's, that's I guess abortion is a really hard one to argue, but that's, the, the I guess that's the thing with that. They feel like they have to enforce those beliefs on everybody. And that's, it's just, that's not how the world is. You can't just go around enforcing your belief system on everybody else. You know, this is a pluralistic democracy, supposed to be pluralistic democracy right where we all have different belief systems we all have different religions we all and have to try to have equality we can't we can't allow one group of people in their religion frankly religious beliefs to just dominate everybody mm-hmm. you know like that's just not there's so many religions in the united states yeah i mean everybody gets a little seat at the table and you know uh, it's just not i don't know i in your you're free to believe in that and again, I don't think that it's a... Uh, I would never ask anybody to give up their religion. And I don't think anybody would, you know, in this country at least. And like that's, that's uh, you know... I like That's the, kind of what they're saying in a way. They're kind of like telling you to give up your belief system. I don't want to live in the wall video where where there's... Everyone's so the same that they get ground up into meat, sausages. Mm-hmm. I would rather think of the United States as a salad where you can taste all the flavors. Yeah. It's cooler that way. Uh, definitely. Mm-hmm. And we can we can do this without one side just getting the upper hand and enforcing their... And it wouldn't work. Like, you could have a theocracy like The Handmaid's Tale. It would be short-lived. Yep. It, it would be violent. It would fall apart. There'd be terror. There'd be acts of everything. It'd be nuts, you know what I mean? It'd be horrible. It'd be a horrible world to live in. Mm-hmm. And it'd be violent and horrid. And no one wants to live like that. Not even the people who would like be benefiting from it would really yep. live like that great. Right. That's something I noticed in that too. Like the people that are benefiting from it have to live shit lives too. Mm-hmm. Why do they want to live like that? Right. You know, and they then, can't even read all the books they want. It's <laughs> the know? same thing with the Civil War talk. I mean, a Civil War in the United States over this type of partisan stuff would look more like Northern and Southern Ireland. Now, we talked about this before, and I think that we, I've definitely seen more and more people talking about it. Is it would definitely it would look like the Troubles in Ireland, yeah, in the Northern troubles. Ireland. It would like, like a thirty-year period in yeah, basically, yeah, in the twentieth century, where just there was just car bombs and and like shoot random shootings almost like they would attack border guards. It wouldn't like, be a clean seceding from the clean. Union baloney. Lots of innocent people get yep. killed. Like, right. It's just it's so stupid. Horrible. And no one knows if they're coming or going. It's mm-hmm. just ridiculous forever. And it's like that's just yeah, no, yeah. Um We don't want that. I don't want that. No one no one in the right mind would want that. I would like peace and prosperity so nobody, for everyone. Nobody will win in that situation and nothing will be solved it'd just be ridiculous 
So we just just try not to have that. Oh my god. And I just can't can't help but see it just I mean from what I'm reading a lot too much too much thing too many things uh, uh but it's just like, man, you can't help but see it start to unfold. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Little and by little. And it's like... Because the one, one side is like claim, claimed if they lose, they haven't really lost. And they're just going to, you know, that's freak the out, part, apparently. That's you know? per, the part so where like Bill Maher was saying that we've already hit the iceberg. Maybe we already have. It, yeah, we just had don't. You're right. He was saying that in his new rules. Or not new rules. Uh, yeah, no, that was it. Yep. Yeah, his new rules segment, right? He was saying we already hit the iceberg. It's like the Titanic, but we're just passengers of the Titanic. But we're... You know, it takes a really long time for the thing to go down. And we just, it hasn't gone down yet. But, man, that's depressing. Shit. And with that shit, we, I think we're going to leave you. <laughs> if you oh, think. my gosh, guys. Just please go vote. Please go vote. Either way. I mean, Try to least, talk your friends out you know, of Civil War if that's try, what they are talking about. Try not it. to just impose your beliefs on other people. Yep. Let, try to live and let live. Live by the golden rule. Do unto others as they would do unto you. You know what I mean? Like, don't. Don't just why can't we just have that? You know, and I think that's a very Christian way of thinking too. And I, I, I really totally I'm I'm down with the, the, the Christianity. <laughs> I'm down I'm down with the Christ. I actually I like the I like the New Testament, you know what I mean? And I just think that, you know, we need to just all be cool hippies. Like <laughs> The truth from a native mm-hmm. perspective <laughs> is that we're all related. Mm-hmm. That don't kill your brethren. I, don't harm your brethren. I don't think there's anything that Christianity should be like that too. Like I think that that's the. This is why I believe in social programs. Yeah, yeah. We're all related. Why are we making we need people to take suffer? Take care of each other. I want take no suffering. We don't need to. <coughs> we just need to be out there to help each other. Yeah. And take care of each other, and uh, yeah, not be assholes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not be assholes. Other. Let's just not be assholes. So it's not just about winning all of the time. Everything. It's just like wow, we need to like help each other. Anyway. Oh my God! I got a separating, but. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anything yeah. else you want to say? So much. Oh. Well, but it's okay. I well, I think we'll leave it leave it right there on that positive note. I was gonna say. <laughs> love, love thy brother. <laughs> Do not fight thy brother. <laughs> so. No. Yeah. Um. Be a righteous dude, man. Be a righteous dude. <laughs> Alright, go vote. And uh well, you know, actually I was thinking we could try to do another podcast, you know, after the election here. We can try Soon after. Um Riding the Moon and all of its Let's uh, see if we get past the <laughs> yeah this, the lunar eclipse here. Um Alright. Alright. Bama P Guava Man. Bama P Guava Man. Vote, vote, vote. Vote goddammit.